On this trip, I'm headed to the rolling hillsides of North Central California in search of razorback hogs. See that? The mud kind of stirred up. Something's just been in here. But you got to be ready to think on your feet if you're going to bring home one of these bad boys. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance, survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. One of the toughest critters in America is the Eurasian wild boar. They've got the tusks, the big razor back, total badasses. I'm in North Central California, in the hills just west of the Sacramento River. And I'm here to see if I can get me one of these acorn fattened wild hogs. A friend of mine has a cattle ranch up here. And as much as I love eating wild pigs, his relationship with the animals is a little more complex. You see them around here right now, the wild pigs. Yeah, we fence them out. They get in the barn and root, root the hay. They could root up a half an acre pretty quick. You know, if you got irrigated ground, that's kind of a nuisance. What would be the approach out here? Like, what would you do out here to try to find them? Look for a water source. Yeah, that'd be fun. And just kind of watch that. Is the first yeah. place to go. Are they pretty flighty? Like, they like they know to steer clear of folks? They don't see real well, but they once they realize you're there, then they take off. Yeah. So, John, you don't mind? You can show me around a little bit, just kind of give me a, a sense of where we're at. Yeah, I can yeah. get around. That sounds good. I'll sure. sit, and hopefully I'll come back with some pork for y'all. I'm keeping a little bit for me, too. That'll work. All right. <laughs> that works. All right, perfect, man. <laughs> To avoid any confusion, I'm not out here looking for escaped domestic pigs. These pigs are genuine Eurasian wild boars. They're the direct ancestors of the animals that get stalked by Siberian tigers in the forests of Eurasia. These things are smart, elusive, and in tune with the terrain. John shows me the lay of the land and then drops me off to set up camp and start hunting. For years, there's been an ongoing debate about whether wild hogs are a legitimate big game species or just an invasive pest that needs to be taken care of immediately. All right, man, thanks for showing me around. Either way you look at it, and I can see both sides, these pigs are here to stay. It is a little bewildering to just kind of be like, all right, here we are. Probably the best setup for this really is to hunt it like how I'd hunt, you know, if I was hunting mule deer or something. Keeping in mind these good spots where you see a lot of activity, but just try to cover ground. Stay in high areas where I can glass, watch for movement. So I just had to kind of figure it out on the fly. If I'm thinking, a lot of glassing, a lot of walking. Well, I guess I'll do just that, start hunting. I really don't know where I'm at. I really don't know what I'm doing. Like, what would I get myself into? But if you can totally cold roll into an area, unguided, and figure it out, it's like a sense of accomplishment that really is unbeatable. Generally, I want to stick to the high places where I can take my binoculars and survey a good bit of country. But I also want to look at the ground underneath my feet to find out where these pigs might be coming and going from, what they're using, what they're feeding on. Pigs break up the cow manure picking pieces out of the cow manure, picking grain out and stuff. There's a pig dropping full of acorn husks. And these are all oaks on this hill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep in this high country, staying on this high ridge, looking for water. You almost couldn't ask for a better layout. See, there's a lot of water down here. I'm going to go down here and look at this water.
This has been disturbed. I mean, something's just been in here. This mud's all, see that? Mud kind of stirred up. What I want to do right now is get up high. These trails, a thing you'll notice, cattle tend to have zigzaggy trails. Pigs will barge straight up hills. You don't see like a lot of deer trails and stuff that does this. Like, pew. But these guys just like shoot straight up. I stupidly followed this trail and didn't really stop and ask myself, what is your plan? How do you see this playing out? I just started walking. And it doesn't even occur to me to slow down and listen and check to see if any pigs might be hanging around. I just ran a whole bunch of them out of their bed. Again, if I knew the area, I would never let that happen. I just stumbled into it. But two busted up and a bunch of them busted down. I have no idea how many. You know, once you scare them out of their bed, they're not coming back anytime soon. You can see like lots of little beds in here. I bet you these are the ones that have been using that water hole. I keep walking and glassing and walking and glassing. It turns in the evening and I see some deer and I see a lot of cattle, but I don't see any pigs. Spooking these pigs was a bummer. And now I'm feeling scared that I just blew it. It's like a lesson about being, you know, too aggressive when you're scouting. And it's just an amateur dumb move. At first light, I get on a good vantage point with my binoculars, where I can watch the area where I kicked all the pigs out the day before to see if I might just get lucky. And I watch it for quite a while, and I don't see a thing. So now the only thing to do is to move far away and see if I can get on to another group of pigs. And I travel about three miles to the southeast, walking along the valley floor, never see a trace of a pig. It's late morning now, and since I spooked those ones out of their bed, I have not seen a thing. A lot of sign. What I want to do now is just try to stay up as high as I can, move slow. Hopefully, I can pick up some pigs, you know, traveling between water and their bedding ground or their feeding ground and their bedding ground. But I just got to put my eyes on some. I see a boar just screaming across the valley floor like a spooked coyote. I must have scared him. This pig is literally sprinting away from me. Oh, I see some more. At least it tells me that there are pigs in the area. Just got to watch where these guys go now. I see that they're headed up a hillside with a lot of thick cover, and it reminds me of the kind of area where I found the pigs bedded the day before. I lost them as they started picking their way up in there. Probably headed to their bedding area. It occurs to me that I'm spooking pigs left and right on this trip. These things are sharp. I need to hunt smarter. I'm going to let them settle down for a few hours until I go after them again. And I have the perfect way to pass the time until that happens. So the cool thing about California is you're actually allowed to hunt quail with a BB gun. So I can kind of hunt around my camp, not stir everything up too much, get some good lunch. Earlier, I had noticed a few quail hanging around on a little hilltop. So now I just slip back in there with my air gun, put a little stalk on them, and boom, there's lunch.
I go back down to the little old homestead sheep shack where I'm camping, and I realize that this place is like a Home Depot for hobos. Everything you could possibly use to cook and process wild game is just laying around. There's wires, there's clean corrugated metal, there's steel buckets. It's pretty dry here, so I want to do like kind of a safe fire, because I can't be burning my buddy's ranch now. So I get an oak fire going in the bucket, pluck my quail, grab a piece of baling wire and truss him up, then use that same piece of baling wire to suspend him over the oak. And within about five minutes, I realize I've invented a whole new way of gourmet camp cooking. People pay good money to eat quail out of restaurants. This is a great way to cook game. I'm going to start carrying a metal five-gallon bucket with me into the mountains. Look at that juicy quail. And within about 20 minutes, the quail is done just right. Bucket rolls through quail. Look at how nicely done that is. This is just something to get me initiated on the land. I always like to eat something from where I'm hunting, because I have this belief that it brings good luck. I didn't put any salt or anything on here. I'm just going total caveman. I'm feeling at one with the place. And now I have to get out and go after my boar. Yesterday, when I busted all those pigs out of that bedding area, I kind of learned a basic idea of how they use their spot. And I was surprised at how close I was able to get to them in their bed before they busted out. Deer, elk, they would have been on you when you were still hundreds of yards out. But these pigs, they just don't see far. They got a good nose, but they can't see. So as I go to approach this area where I think this boar is bedded, I just take it real slow, keep the wind in my face, and I keep my nose open. Wind's coming up like this. I can like smell. I don't know if it's old or new, but I can smell stuff. I can just tell they've been in there. And I got a feeling they're in there now. All of a sudden. I got a good hit on this one down here. Wow. Well, I think I got a good hit on that. I want to check for blood down here, make sure I did get a hit. Look at this bedding area they were in. That one I shot, I think, was right up in here. Came through here. Oh, there's a little bit of blood. Oh, there's more blood. Oh, there's a lot of blood. Can't believe this pig's still moving. Oh, there it is. There's nothing barnyard about this pig. Look at these things. This pig is a pig of the woods. That is a wild pig. Dark color, big old razor back on him, coated in briars. This boy is going to be good eating, man, because these things have been feeding on these acorns. Oh, man, he's got big old hog jowls, too. Look at that guy. Loving it. I mean, I know you're supposed to hate him, but you got to kind of love him. I mean, the fact you can come out and get, like, this much pork with your own rifle, make your own bacon, make your own hams, pork loin, it's just like, come on. I mean, whatever your opinion on them is, whether you think they're good or bad, if these aren't American, then we're not American. They've been here as long as us. We brought them. 
And they're a challenging hunt, you know? These guys aren't fooling. I mean, these guys know how to play the game. I mean, they're playing it all the time. They bed just like an elk, where they got an upwind draft coming to them in a spot where they can look out and see a lot of activity. When something happens, they just move. I mean, they have really fit into the landscape. It's a challenging pursuit. Instead of taking this guy apart here and breaking it down into primal cuts, I'm gonna rig up a dragon harness and drag him out down through this gully all the way out to the valley and then drag him back to camp. Because at that sheep shack, there's a pretty nice buck pole up there. It's not what it was meant to be, but it'll work as a buck pole. And I'll be able to hang him up and then I can skin him whole and keep his meat real nice and clean and also keep him in large pieces for you know doing big roasts. That should work good. cutting into a pig and you see right off the bat what it means when people say white meat. This is a far cry from mahogany colored venison. And this guy's gonna be a good eater. He's just the right size. Not too big, not too small. Pulling this loin off, I think what I'm gonna do is just wrap this guy in foil and put it right on the fire. My favorite cut of domestic pork is pork loin and I know this wild boar loin is gonna be just as good. Right there, look at that. Anybody who's used to the color of deer meat can see that that's something different. Cannot wait to get into that. Wild pigs are lean. Unlike domestic pigs that spend all day lolling around and eating grain, this boar right here runs for a living, and he plays a constant game of survival against mountain lions, coyotes, and other predators. So that's a lot leaner than a ham off domestic pork, but still that good white meat. These hams and the rest of the hog are getting split between me and my buddy for letting me hunt his ranch. But for now, I'm gonna start cooking up this pork loin. I wanna keep cooking hobo style. And as good as that bucket worked, I'm gonna try something different. This piece of sheet metal catches my eye and I decide to build a makeshift oven. Put some seasoning on it, put some vegetables with it, wrap this guy in foil, and just lay that foil package right on the coals. I just want to throw a little heat back down at that meat. Oh, that's nice and hot there now. Okay, I'm gonna check this. Moment of truth. Mmm. That's good pork loin, man. Oh, it's good. That is so damn good. I'm a believer, especially with apples and onions. What's up, fellas? These cows know it's dinner time. 
They're fired up. These cows like the smell of cooking apples and onions and pork. You know, seeing those cows and eating wild pig makes me kind of reconsider the whole debate around wild pigs. I've been all around agricultural lands and ranch lands and stuff my whole life. And there's no way wild pigs impact the landscape as much as domestic cows. I mean, look at this place. The grass is cropped, covered in manure. You put fences up to hold them in, water holes for them. You put roads in to take care of cattle. You know, we don't need to get rid of cows because of that. Really makes me think a lot about what belongs on the landscape, like what is natural and what's unnatural. And I have my suspicion that these pigs have become natural on the landscape. These guys, time will tell. Maybe they'll go feral someday and we'll be out here hunting feral cattle, which won't be a bad way to spend a weekend. For all the uncertainty there is about whether these pigs belong on the land, I'm sure about this. I had a great hunt, I'm thankful for this animal, and I'm happy to know I can come back to this ranch one day and hunt pigs again.